Hello, everybody, and welcome to Commodity Culture, where we break down the commodity space for both new and experienced investors. My name is Jesse Day. Before we get started, standard disclaimer, nothing here is investing advice. Do your own due diligence. And today's guest is the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute, the publisher of the Trends Journal, and the author of the best-selling books, Trend Tracking and Trends 2000, among others. Somebody I've wanted to have on the show for a long time now is Mr. Gerald Salente. Welcome to the show. No, oh, thanks for having me, Jesse. Yeah, honored to have you here. And I want to get started like I do with all first-time guests with the origin story. So this show focuses on investing a lot. I know you go far beyond that into geopolitics, trends tracking. How did you begin your journey? Um, I know you were involved in politics as well, so I'd like to hear about that. And how did that lead you to where you are today? Well, what happened was after graduate school, um, I, I, I really didn't want to work. I was bartender in the city, New York, and my mother passed away. And I had two younger sisters living in Yonkers, so I went up to help my father. And I said, what am I going to do, you know? I, and uh, there was a guy running for mayor of Yonkers. It's a city of over 200,000 people. And I got involved in the political campaign. And I, this, this was like nothing. I mean, you know, I've been working all my life. You know, I'm a kid who grew up in the Bronx. So I've been working all the time. And I hit the top right away. And I'm working on major political campaigns in Westchester County in the early 1970s. And Westchester was the richest county in, in America. And they were grooming me. They set me up. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate at 26 years old. And it was the worst job I ever had in my life to watch grown men grovel to suck their way up to the top. Well, young guys BSing in the back of the chamber and it got a little clown, a little slobby clown, a sergeant at arms, a little piece of crap, Senator Frank Smith. Senator Tom Allen. I say, what's the matter, man? What's, what's this stuff? The guy, guys can't, they can't push the door open by themselves. And then my buddies would leave me and follow the senator to sit down and pull out his chair and help him sit down. I say, what's the matter? A cat can't sit down by himself. He needs some help. He say, you know, Gerald, if you have that kind of an attitude, you're not going to make it here. I like, I'm not going to, I quit after one year. And I designed and instructed a course and taught it at St. John's University called American Politics and Campaign Technology, how to run political campaigns. From there, I became a chief government affairs specialist for a segment of the chemical industry. This is the 1970s. At 28 years old, I'm staying at the Willard Hotel in D.C. and putting my meetings on at the Hay Adams. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement. And then, still a young guy, the Iranian conflict begins. And another little piece of scum crap president, Jimmy Carter. Oh yeah, the guy that gave us the Mujahideen that became Al-Qaeda to go fight the Russians in Afghanistan with that arrogant Belinsky guy. Oh, that guy? Yeah. Comes back from visiting the Shah on New Year's Eve, after New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, comes back, him and Rosalind and all the little guys dressed up in their military drag saluting him as he comes out. And he announces to the American people that the Shah is the island of stability in the Middle East. In the Bronx, we used to have a saying, bullshit has its own sound. I'm watching millions of people taken to the streets. And just like they teach us to hate the Russians, they taught us to hate the Iranians. Oh, you mean the Iranians that the United States, the MI6 and the CIA, the MI6 and the UK and the, and the CIA overthrew the democratically elected government of Mosaddegh in 1953? The Iranian president, because that son of a bitch had the nerve, the gall, to say, no, this oil does not belong to you, Winston Churchill. It doesn't belong to Anglo-Iranian oil, better known today as BP. No, 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 it doesn't belong Kermit Roosevelt, the little suck-ass boy of, of, of Theodore Roosevelt and the CIA. No, it doesn't belong to Standard Oil, better known today as ExxonMobil. 
It belongs to the Iranian people. Screw you. They overthrew the country, brought in the Shah, the Savak, the secret police. They made the SS look good. The amount of people that they murdered. So how would I become a trend forecaster? As everybody's looking at this and hating it and believing the crap spewing out of the mouth of the politicians, I said to myself, this thing's going to be overthrown. What's going to happen? I started playing the futures market. A $5,000 bet in gold, 5000 in oil. I brought it up to almost three quarters of a million dollars, knowing that gold and oil prices would go up because of what was going on. And that's when I became a political atheist. And that's when I began to grow up. But I wouldn't know what I know if I wasn't on the other side. I have a photograph of me when I picked up Ronald Reagan at the Chicago Hilton, put on a brunch with our board of directors uh, two days before he's announcing he's running against Gerald Ford. It was 30 years old in 1976. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. I've been on the other side. So I know what the game is. And that's how I began the Trends Research Institute. Very interesting. I want to delve a little bit more into the political side of things, because as you mentioned, you served as the executive assistant of the New York State Senate for a short time, and you've also been involved in running political campaigns. How did those experiences shape your current view of the political landscape? You know, I've heard you say that we have evil, satanic people in charge. That sounds like an extreme statement, but from what I've seen, it actually seems fairly accurate. Did you start to notice those things back then in the political class? And how have things changed uh, from then till now, if at all? Hey, no, they haven't changed at all. Again, I, as I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go pull up the chair, pull out a chair, let the senators sit down. What am I, you know, I, I don't do that kind of, again, I'm a guy that grew up, you know, to be a man. And the people in politics, again, I, I learned, as I said, I quit after one session. I wouldn't stay. None of my, my buddy, Brian Donahue, may rest in peace. His wife, uh, Mary Donahue, became the lieutenant governor under Pataki. You know, I was right at the top. And, uh, but I, I could, I would not, I'm a man. I don't, I don't swallow crap. And I don't take orders. So, Again, it, nothing has changed. It's only more obvious as you grow older. Look, when I was a young kid, the Vietnam War was going on. I believed the crap. I voted for Richard Nixon. I was a young guy. You don't know. You get brainwashed by the media. And then when you keep learning and learning and learning and learning and studying and studying and learning and learning, you learn what's really going on. And that's why we put out this magazine. There's no magazine. There, it's the only magazine in the world that gives you in-depth geopolitical and socioeconomic trends analysis and trend forecasts. If you hate freedom of speech, if you can't think for yourself, you'll hate the trends journal because it's the truth in trends. We give you the facts. This is what's being reported. This is what they're saying. Here's our trends analysis and our trend forecasts. And as you said in the beginning, you know, in your show saying, the, what you're getting now is not financial advice. We're just giving you information. The same thing with our magazine. It's think for yourself. This is the way we see it. This is our analysis. Now it's up to you to go with it. So again, I wouldn't know what I know if I wasn't on the other side. If you haven't been on the other side, you don't know the scam. We And they are evil. Hey, I'm the Nobel piece of crap prize winner that idiots and morons look up to and bow down to. My name is Barack Obama. I lied my way into office saying that I was a peace candidate. Do you like that, uh, opera, that troop surge in Afghanistan as soon as I got elected? I'm the Obama that said I want that guy Gaddafi out of there. I want him out of Libya, the most, the richest country in Africa, where the people had more rights and benefits than most countries of the world. I want that guy Assad out in Syria. I want him out of there. I'm quoted in the book, Double Down. I'm really good at killing people. Is that evil? How about, how about George W. Bush? I want that guy Saddam Hussein, weapons of mass destruction. We got to get rid of them. They're evil. By their deeds you shall know them.
So I wanted to touch on something you noted in the recent Trends Journal, and I want to read a quote from it. It says, consumers are cutting back the amount of stuff they buy. The change in the amount of dollars they are spending month to month is a fraction of the inflation rate, meaning that shoppers are reducing their purchases. Adding U.S. weakness and the prospect of even higher interest rates, together with the decelerating global economy, we maintain our forecast of a full-on U.S. recession arriving later this year. So could you expand on how you see that unfolding and how severe you think this recession will be? Well, let's go back to the first part of it. So they're saying that they come out with the um, with the GDP numbers and they say consumer spending is increasing. Yeah, it's increasing, but it's below the inflation rate. So it's really decreasing. So people are spending more to buy less. The inflation rates, yeah, things are coming down. Prices are coming down, but prices are still very high. People still can't afford to buy homes. Most people you know, can't afford to go to school, can't afford to buy a car. What's the average price of a car? Almost $50,000. These moronic things with all this electronic crap in them that cost a fortune to fix when something breaks. Oh, you can't open the trunk. It needs to open by itself. Can't put a key in the door to turn it. No, 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 no. So the the costs of, of products are still very high. Now, let's go back to the real inflation rate. You go to John Williams shadow stats. It's went much higher than what the government is saying because they started rigging it in the 1980s. So they wouldn't have to pay people more in Social Security. Oh, the housing prices that went up 40% in two years? No, 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 no. No, they didn't. We're looking in general at different levels and apartment dwellings and this and that. We're going to make up a phony number so we could bring down the... Oh, people stopped eating steak and now they're eating chopped meat. That's right. They changed their diet. So we're rigging the numbers to show that the numbers aren't really as high as they are. People are struggling. So now... They're raising interest rates. Let's go back. And again, I'm not making this up. Go back. When did they start raising interest rates? Oh, in, in March of 2022. How come they didn't start raising them earlier? When inflation was skyrocketing and hitting 40 year highs. Oh, it's only temporary. It's only transitory. I'm Jerome Powell. I'm the head of the Fed. I'm Christine Lagarde, the head of the, East, the European Central Bank. You're full of crap, Salenti. Inflation's not real. It's oh, Then it becomes transitory. They didn't start raising rates in what? In, in Europe until what? Last July? And now they're ratcheting them up. Oh, Germany's in a recession. So is Europe. Oh, no, no. It's only a small recession. Oh, now you're going to keep raising interest rates. It takes about 15 to 18 months before the effects of the rising interest rates hit the economy. Now they're going to be raising them again. So the latest numbers came out. The job report is still strong. People, the jobs that are being created are low paying jobs. They're laying off people that in, in middle income jobs. We put it in the magazine every week. So now they're going to raise interest rates again. They're going to raise them probably another 50 basis points. Oh, did you see the number of new mo uh, mortgage applications has gone way down as the, uh, uh, mortgages now are hitting almost 7% again, 6.75%. So here's the story. It's summertime and the living is easy. People are in a summer state of mind, vacation. Travel's going to be booming. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Then autumn sets in in the Northern Hemisphere and people start feeling a shock of what's really going on. So considering the way they're raising interest rates, this is our forecast. By late September, October, you're going to start seeing the markets really going down. And again, why the market's going up? A couple of companies are driving it up. AI. People aren't investing in dividends. No, no, no dividends. No, 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 no. We're going to invest in AI because this thing is really skyrocketing. You're looking at the NASDAQ has gone up 32% in this year. 32%. 
remember the Nasdaq was going down because after the COVID war started winding down, people started going out and buying things rather than shopping online for everything and living online and zooming online and going to school online. That it was Nasdaq was going down. Now it's going up. It's only a handful of stocks driving it up. So when the winter starts setting in autumn, winter, that's when we see the markets going down. And by the way, AI is real. This isn't a dot com bust. Our magazine, the Trends Journal, this is when it was an eight page, <laughs> eight page quarterly newsletter when it began. This is 1999. It began in 1991. Here's your article dot com this. We forecast in October of 1999 that the dot com bust would happen by the second quarter of 2000. It did. It happened in March of 2000. This is different. They were making up crap back then in the beginning of the internet revolution. This AI is real. So those stocks are going to keep going up, but a lot of them are going to go down and it's going to have a short run in if they don't keep going and going and going. So it's not enough to keep boosting up the markets. So it seems like the collapse of regional banks such as Silicon Valley and Signature, these were massive events, but it seems they've been all but forgotten as the media headlines move on to the next shiny object. Is the banking crisis over? Are we going to see this issue reemerge? And are we going to see other things breaking in the financial system due to this rapid acceleration of rates? You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before not only in the U.S., but around the world. And here's a story. The COVID war that was launched by the Chinese on Chinese Lunar New Year 2020, the year of the rat, the damage it's done is incalculable. E economically, geopolitically, mentally, physically, spiritually. The numbers are all there. We write about it all the time, the suicide rates, the crime rates. And again, we forecast this is going to happen. Now the big one, the office building bust. Yes, you have in San Francisco from the clowns, the geeks that launched the COVID war, say that guy Dorsey from, he had Twitter at the time, he's supposed to go to Africa, wrote about it in the magazine as it's happening in February, 2020. I'm not going to South Africa. Nope. And everybody go home. Don't come to work. Your office vacancy rate in San Francisco is 30%. You mean 30% of the office buildings are vacant? Yeah, that's right. Same thing in LA. Oh, over here in New York City, it's only 20%. Oh, up in, in uh, Toronto, oh, they're saying by next year, it'll be 25%. One after another, you're looking at vacancy rates that are off the charts. Now let's go to the office occupancy rate meaning how many people going back to work. According to Castle Systems, with a K, it's 10 largest cities in America. It's about 50%. Okay, you talked about raising interest rates. These are floating loans. Now, I got to pay more on my loan as I have a lot less tenants. Here, yeah, keep the building. I can't pay for it. This, there is in the commercial, the whole commercial real estate sector, it's 20 trillion, over 20 trillion dollars. And now that numbers, they, those debts are coming due. And a lot of that in the commercial real estate. The small and medium sized banks have most of those loans. You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. And again, the higher interest rates go, the worse it becomes. Oh, and let's not talk about the 30, Oh, almost $32 trillion in government debt in the United States. Oh, you got to pay more on your debt as interest rates go up. We won't talk about that. Don't talk about that. And then you go to other countries where they're raising rates like the UK. And, 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 and people have to now, <laughs> they, their mortgage is, are, the mortgages are going up along with the interest rates because of the kind of deals that they have. Same thing in a lot of Canada. You're looking at over 2 million people who could be losing their houses in the UK in, in, the, in, the next, in the next year. So all this brought to you by the COVID war. And go back to 2019 before it happened. Germany was 
that far away from a recession. There were protests going on all over the world, Algeria, Lebanon, South Africa, Chile, the yellow vests in France, people taking to the streets, uh, Colombia, Peru, all over, all over, taking to the streets, 2019, lack of basic living standards, government corruption, crime and violence. Then the COVID war comes. Can't go out protesting anymore. Get back in your house. Oh, by the way, don't worry about it. Here's free money. Here, here, here. We'll print up tens of trillions of dollars and make up any crap we want. Bring these zero interest rates down to zero so we could prop up the markets when they should have been crashing. Oh, no, no. That's not what's causing inflation. You know what they're saying what's causing inflation? I'm not making this up. The same clowns that said it wasn't here it was only temporary and transitory. Higher wages. We gotta, we gotta bring, we gotta, we have, we gotta keep raising interest rates so we can slow down the economy so the plantation workers of Slavelandia could make less money so that all the bigs could get bigger. They're blaming it on higher wages, not what they caused by dumping in these countless trillions of dollars of worthless money, backed by nothing and printed on nothing. I want to talk about the IMF developing a global digital currency platform. So I want to read a quote from the executive director of the IMF. They stated, at the IMF, we are working on the concept of a global CBDC platform. If countries develop CBDCs only for domestic deployment, we are underutilizing their capacity. We've been forecasting this. We've been going back to 2014. As a matter of fact, in this week's Trends Journal, we put all the forecasts that we've said about going from dirty cash to digital trash. They're going to do it. Here's why. As I mentioned just before, the, with the, the system that they've created by pumping in all this cheap money is unprecedented. The, the, vet, the dollar is going to crash when they start lowering interest rates. The only reason the dollar is strong is because of high interest rates. The, lower, the more interest rates go down, the weaker the dollar goes, and the higher gold prices go, by the way. Gold prices are low because the dollar is strong, and dollar, gold is dollar-based, and it costs a lot more money from other countries to buy gold. But of course, again... The, um, the central banks have bought 155% more gold in the first quarter of this year than last year. So, because they know how bad it is. So going back to digital currencies, they're going to come out with a digital currency like that. They're going to do something like the Russians hacked our banking system, but don't worry about it. They stole your money, but we're going to give you a new one. They're going to create a digital currency so they could try to get rid of the debt loads that they're never going to be able to pay off. And the reason, other reason they're going to come out with a digital currency is they know every penny you spent, what you spent it on, where you spent it, so they could get their tax money. Because these little scums never work a day in their life. All they do is suck off the public tit. And all they want to do is keep building a bigger and bigger government so they have more control over you. Bureaucrats, by the way, and again, I was in the system Bureaucrats are moronic, ignorant, stupid jerks that can't get a job in the real world that suck into the political system and then become the most arrogant, arrogant little clowns out there. So they want to build a system bigger so they could take over more control. We saw it with the COVID war. And so that's why they're going to come out with digital. Yes, they're going to do it. When they're going to do it, nobody knows. But they're going to keep doing it. And they're, they, they're planting it in the minds of people. Now, let's go back. I mean, I'm an old cat, you know. Younger people, they, their lives are digital. They're, they're digitally addicted every, in every possible way. And let's go to a place called India. Only 1.4 billion people. And everything you pay, you pay with your phone. You pay with your phone. You pay with your phone. So in China, they, 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 they're going digital as well. They're the first to do it. So they're all going to do it. So I want to also talk about, speaking about tools of control, I want to get your take on the WHO pandemic accord, along with the recently revealed digital health initiative launched with the EU. The WHO director general said with 80 countries and territories connected to the EU digital COVID-19 certificate, the EU has set a global 
standard. He goes on to say, I am pleased that the WHO will build on the privacy preserving principles and cutting edge technology of the EU certificate to create a global tool against future pandemics. Is this an attempt to put a sort of vaccine passport in place to limit international travel unless you take their preferred medical treatment? Absolutely. They did it before and they'll keep doing it again. Again, let's go back to the to World Health Organization. These are the low-life pieces of scum that called the COVID war a pandemic in March of 2020 when less than 8,000 people out of 8 billion allegedly died from the coronavirus. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's no number at all. You're calling it a pandemic? <clears throat> That's right. You know why? <clears throat> Excuse me. The drug dealers are in charge. Morons and imbeciles call them big pharma. The banksters, the drug dealers, the military industrial complex, and the geeks are in control of our lives. End of story. All they're interested in is in money. Not one word, not one word, again, wrote about it in the cover of the Trends Journal in January 28th, 2020. Remember, the, the, the COVID war starts two weeks before that, a week and a half. Coronavirus. 106 dead in China. Our next line was 1.4 billion still alive. You know, what are you telling me this crap for? It's about control. We have, as I said before, in talking about Obama and the murderers and the Bushes and the Clintons and the, the, the Bidens, they're, they're murderers and thieves. Hey, I'm Jamie Dimon. I'm too big to fail. Oh, only charged five felonies, but that's okay. And the central banks, does, what did they do when the panic of 08 hit? Pumped in $29 trillion to bail out the banks. Oh, that's not my number. That's the number from Bard College, Levy Institute. I'm saying to you, when you're talking about who, it's a crime syndicate. These are maniacs in charge. And look at the slobby jerks that are telling us what to do and to get jabbed. Not one word about natural healing. Not a word. Not one word. Not one word. And by the way, that was the first book I worked on back in 1988. Not one word. Who is dying of COVID? Oh, the facts are there. According to the CDC, 61% of the 1 to 17-year-olds hospitalized for COVID were obese. People with pre-existing comorbidities. I took out a new domain name two weeks ago for America. Blimpitis. Only 42% of the people are obese. Only 70% are overweight. I wonder why you're dying from this stuff. And who is it killing? Is people killing people with pre-existing comorbidities? It's life on earth. But how about getting healthy? No. So going back to who, Yes. And they're doing it for the drug dealers. End of story. So I want to wrap up with touching on how people can protect both their wealth in the coming recession and the market crash, as well as their personal freedoms in the face of all of these Western former so-called democracies turning more and more authoritarian. So in terms of the financial side, do you think holding an asset like physical gold or silver is an intelligent way to take your wealth outside of the financial system and protect yourself? Are there any other asset classes you'd be looking at? And in terms of protecting one's personal freedoms, what, what do you think the best way to do that is? Well, on the precious metals, yes, definitely. And as I say, why would you keep your money in the bank when you're not getting anything on it and they charge you when you need to borrow money. And again, and I'm not making this up once upon a time they had in America, a bank holiday. It's a holiday. You can't get your money out. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> turn in your gold. And if you don't, you go to jail. I'm Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
Oh, and turn in and we'll give you $25 an ounce. And then as soon as we get it all, we're going to raise the price to $32 an ounce. Why would you keep your money in the bank? <laughs> Number two, besides the precious metals, I play the Bitcoin game. And uh, it's again, that's my gamble game. And that there's going to be also a time when things crash to buy real estate again, but not now. And we have said from the very beginning, as interest rates went up, there's not going to be a housing market crash. This is not back in the panic of 08 when they were selling these subprime mortgages. You don't have a job. You're deep in debt. Don't worry about it. Here, sign over here. You could buy a house. That's not going on now. <clears throat> but when things go down, that's the time to buy. But they haven't gone down yet. And it's going to be a while. And it's going to be a long downturn. It's probably going to be about a four or five year downturn. However, one of my sayings is when all else fails, they take you to war. Go back to what followed the Great Depression, World War II. What followed the dot-com bust, War on Terror. There is talk after talk after talk about a nuclear confrontation with Russia. And now you got this guy, Zelensky, and anybody, people don't know this, you could Google it up, Zelensky plays piano with his penis. This guy was a sitcom clown who's now the president of Ukraine, and there he is playing the piano with his penis, along with another guy. He's saying that Russia is going to blow up the nuclear plant that they are occupying. Just like the lie that Russia blew up their Nord Stream pipeline that Seymour Hersh shows that the United States and Ukraine did. Just like they said the Russians blew up that hydroelectric plant and that dam that they were occupying and hundreds of Russian soldiers were killed. Now they're saying that the Russians are going to blow up the nuclear power plant that they're occupying. We are on the verge of nuclear destruction. World War II isn't ancient history. The people have no clue of why this war happened and what's happening next. So going back to the markets, it's not going to make a damn bit of difference if there's a nuclear exchange. And not only are they putting it in the brains of the people by through the military industrial complex, you had things like Business Insider in June running articles what to do in case a nuclear attack hits your city. Another article, what foods to eat in case of a nuclear Armageddon. What are you, out of your mind? It's the end of the world. That is my concern. So all of what we're talking about won't mean anything if we don't have peace on earth. And you're banned from the media for peace on earth. And I have, I launched Occupy Peace back in, 2015, and I have major peace rallies. So what can people do? Put your money where your heart is. You better do something for peace because these maniacs are going to destroy our lives with more wars. And this is going to be the war that ends all wars because it's going to be the... They asked Albert Einstein, a cat that knew a thing or two about the atomic bomb, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know. He said, but they'll be fighting the Fourth World War with sticks and stones. Well, very well said. And thank you very much for joining us today, Gerald. For those who want to learn more, could you tell us about the Trends Journal? And if there's anywhere else online you'd like to direct people, feel free to do that as well. Yeah, trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And by the way, you also, we just put out these T-shirts. You get these on trendsjournal.com. Hey, politicians, who the F are you? to tell me what to do. I love it. And here's the back. <laughs> awesome. And again, the Trends Journal is only $2.86 a week. Nothing. Over 160 pages a week, no ads. Nobody tells us what to do. Nobody tells us what to say. And there's no magazine like it in the world. And if you don't like it, 30-day money-back guarantee. So thank you so much for what you're doing and for having me on. I very much appreciate it. Commodity Culture is a series on commodities and natural resources. 
If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always up to date with the latest episodes.